In this video, we'll show you how to determine which gas is stored in each of the electrolyzer columns. First, we can observe that the black storage column has more bubbles being produced than the red column. Since we are decomposing water into hydrogen and oxygen, we know that there must be two hydrogen molecules for every one oxygen molecule. So, more bubbles in the black storage column must mean more gas, which indicates that it's hydrogen. Second, we can observe the volumes of the gases produced. As the electrolyzer stores the gases, you'll notice that the black storage column has twice as much gas stored as the red column. Again, since two hydrogen molecules are produced for every one oxygen molecule, the black side must be storing hydrogen. We know what the net reaction is for decomposing water into hydrogen and oxygen. This net reaction is the combination of two half reactions, one that occurs at the anode and one at the cathode of the electrolyzer. Knowing these two half reactions will help us determine where hydrogen and oxygen are produced in the electrolyzer. For a power supply, or in this case a battery, current flows from the positive to the negative terminal. Since current flow is the opposite of the flow of electrons, this means that electrons are leaving the negative terminal, which is the cathode, and the positive terminal, which is the anode, gains electrons. When the electrons leave the cathode, they combine with water molecules, and we get the following half reaction. We can see that one of the products is hydrogen, so this must be where hydrogen is produced. The anode takes in electrons, which must come from the hydroxide ions present in the electrolyte. Writing the balanced half reaction gives us the following equation. One of the products is oxygen, so this must be where oxygen is produced. To see these chemical reactions in detail, please view the CPOP electrolysis simulation at the following address. Finally, we can conduct tests to identify the gases. We know the hydrogen is less dense than air and flammable, so we will try to ignite hydrogen captured in an inverted test tube. First, take an inverted test tube and insert the open end of the gas supply tube into the mouth of the test tube. Open the valve, which will release the gas into the test tube. Leave the valve open until most of the gas has exited the storage column, and then close it. Remove the tube and take a burning splint and insert it into the mouth of the test tube. Now we should hear a noticeable pop sound. The gas that was in the storage column must have been hydrogen. Because oxygen is only slightly denser than air, we have to use a different method to collect it. First, submerge a 10 milliliter test tube in a basin of water so that the test tube is completely full of water. Then, invert the test tube, place the end of the gas supply tube into the mouth of the test tube. Open the valve, you should see the gas displacing the water in the test tube. When most of the gas from the electrolyzer has entered the test tube, remove the tubing from the test tube and place your thumb over the opening of the test tube. Then, remove it from the basin of water and turn the test tube upright. Light a splint, let it burn for a moment, then blow it out. While the splint is still glowing, remove your thumb from the test tube and insert the splint. It should reignite. This result indicates that the gas that was in this storage column must be oxygen. For more information about the curriculum, please visit CPUP's website or LabAIDS, our publisher, at the following addresses.